Hi guys, welcome back to another The Story Behind video. After the last two, I did a deep dive into films from the horror genre that are based on true events. After telling the people of Twitter which stories I was interested in doing, a lot of people replied telling me out of my options they were keen to see me do a video on Hannibal Lecter, and being that I do like to factor in the wants of my audience, I decided why not? So time to sit back as we dive into the story. Dr. Hannibal Lecter is a fictional character who appears in a series of suspense novels written by Thomas Harris. The character is a Lithuanian-born man who resides in Baltimore and works as a renowned forensic psychiatrist. By day, he is a well-to-do socialite, but by night, he is a cunning, charismatic, and highly intelligent cannibalistic psychopathic serial killer. Prior to being caught, the news called him the Chesapeake Ripper. The character is eventually caught and incarcerated in a mental facility, but is often sought out by the FBI and other authorities to consult and assist them in finding other similar active serial killers around the United States. The character was introduced in Harris's 1981 novel Red Dragon and since has appeared in the other novels in the series The Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal and Hannibal Rising. In film, the character has been portrayed by Brian Cox in the film Manhunter, Sir Anthony Hopkins in The Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal and Red Dragon, Gaspard Yuliel and Aran Thomas in Hannibal Rising, and Mads Mikkelsen in the Hannibal TV series. In 2003, the character, or at least Hopkins' portrayal of him, was chosen by the American Film Institute as the greatest villain in American cinema and in 2010 was named one of the 100 greatest characters of the last 20 years by Entertainment Weekly. Seeing as how this character has fascinated and captured the attention of so many over the past almost 40 years, it begs the question, how did Thomas Harris create his iconic cannibal character? For decades, people wondered where Harris got his inspiration from. Due to being very private and not one for interviews, this question went unanswered. However, in 2013, in the 25th anniversary edition of Harris's novel The Silence of the Lambs, he wrote a new introduction for his book and in it finally revealed the inspiration for his best-selling character. Thanks to the sleuthing of other reporters and investigators, they were able to discover that the Dr. Salazar Harris talks about in his introduction was a pseudonym for Alfredo Back in 1963, at the age of 23, Harris was asked by Argozzi, an American pulp fiction magazine that published from 1882 to 1978, to go to Nuevo Leon State Prison in Monterrey, Mexico. He was asked to interview a man named Dykes Askew Simmons, an American citizen on death row for murdering three young people in Mexico, which is a complicated story all on its own that I won't go into. A year or so earlier, Simmons had planned an escape from prison. He had bribed a guard to leave a door unlocked and provide him with a pistol. After Simmons had handed over the money and proceeded to make his escape, he realized he had been betrayed. The guard who had received the money not only kept it, but shot Simmons to boot. Simmons did not die as the prison skilled doctor had saved his life. Through the course of Harris's investigation, he queried about Simmons' medical treatment and from there was taken to the prison's medical office and introduced to Dr. Alfredo Bali Trevino. Harris described Trevino as having a certain elegance about him. Through a series of questions and answers, the doctor questioned Harris far more than the reverse, wishing to discuss Simmons' disfigured appearance, seeking to know Harris's feeling towards it. He would also bring up Simmons' childhood experiences and ask about Simmons' supposed victims. Harris's account of their interaction is eerily similar to the famous scene played out by Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster in the film adaption of The Silence of the Lambs. It wasn't until after Harris and Trevino's conversation was over and that they had bid their farewells that Harris learned from the warden that the good doctor was actually a murderer. As the warden put it, he will never leave this place. He is insane. Alfredo Bali Trevino was supposedly, and I say this because I do not trust the source I got this information from, born in Mendes Tomolipas on October 2nd, 1931, and was the second born of five children. Later in life, he and two of his brothers would attend medical school as their parents encouraged all their children to study and become successful. The story that would lead to Trevino becoming so notorious is filled with inconsistent versions of events and conspiracies. You will never find two stories that are the same. Motives, people involved, and even dates continue to change, but the only thing that remains the same in the details of the crime itself and the charges. Based on the most investigative work I have ever done in my life, this is what I was able to put together. 
On the 8th or 9th of October in 1959, Alfredo Bali Trevino got into a fight with Jesus Castillo Rangel. Supposed sources close to the family say the two men had known each other since high school and that Jesus had worked for the doctor for quite some time. The reasons for what happened next are far from clear. Some sources claim a lover's quarrel erupted between the two, other sources say Rangel had been taking out loans from Trevino and owed him a great deal of money which he refused to pay back. Regardless of motives, here is what we do know. Trevino sedated Rangel by giving him an injection of sodium pentothal, which is an ultra-short action barbiturate general anesthetic that when used in high doses can render a person unconscious in less than 30 seconds. He then injected an additional drug in Rangel's unconscious body and dragged the body into a bathtub. It was there he then slit Rangel's throat with a scalpel and exsanguinated his body, which means to drain the body of all its blood. He then methodically sliced the victim's body, chopping it into small pieces and stuffed and packed the flesh and bones into a cardboard box. Trevino took the box to his car and drove it to a vacant lot in municipality of Guadalupe. Some articles actually say Guadalupe was the uncle of a supposed accomplice, but there was no mention of an accomplice in court records and Guadalupe is a name more associated with women, not men. But most importantly, Guadalupe is a place in Nuevo León, which is where the events of the story take place. It was in Guadalupe that Trevino buried the box containing Rangel's remains. The remains were later discovered by authorities which resulted in two Mexican officers pretending to be patients and arresting Trevino in his office. He was accused of offering to bribe police officers during his arrest but to no avail. When dealing with authorities, not only did Trevino not reject the charges, he confessed and during his confession boasted about his thoroughness in dismembering his friend's body and how he did so without cutting through a single bone, which demonstrates his knowledge of anatomy. In May 1961, the court sentenced him to death, which made him the last Mexican to receive the death penalty sentence in Mexico. He was found guilty of qualified homicide, clandestine burial, and usurpation of profession. Authorities suspected this was not Trevino's first crime, and even assumed he was involved in a series of murders involving young hitchhikers who had been found dead on the roads of the state of Nuevo León around this time. But this was never proven, and so he was not charged, despite what some blogs say. In the press, Trevino was known as the werewolf of Nuevo León, the killer doctor, the monster of the workshops, and the vampire Bali. Despite his death sentence, Trevino's lawyer was able to have his sentence commuted from the death penalty to the maximum 20 years in jail, after which time he was released in 1981. After his release, it took him a long time to adjust as the community still remembered what he had done, but eventually he resumed his life as a doctor, spending the rest of his life tending to the poor and elderly of the community. In an interview in 2008, he made it clear he did not wish to relive his dark past, talk about his crime or time in prison, but according to reports from those he treated free of charge, he was a very good person. Alfredo Bali Trevino passed away from prostate cancer in February 2009 at the age of 77. While I guess we'll never truly know what led Trevino to do what he did or if it was his only crime, what we do know is that a brief interaction between him and Thomas Harris led to Harris creating one of the most iconic characters in history and even used some details of things he had learned from the case and other crimes Trevino suspected of to create the character of Buffalo Bill who also appeared in The Silence of the Lambs. Trying to gather information on Trevino and his crimes was one of the hardest things I have ever done. To get proper information, I had to go in search of actual Mexican news sources and have people I know who spoke Spanish translate the articles for me. I found dozens of blogs and articles, but many said the same thing, and when they weren't saying the same thing, they were contradicting each other. One blog quoted a lot from the Latin Times, but the Latin Times posted three articles by the same person on the same topic in a week period and each article was different. One article claimed one version of events, then the next article had a completely different version of events, then the third article had yet another version, which is just bad journalism. Why make one article, let alone three, when you don't have all the information? Another article said he got out of jail in the year 2000, but they also acknowledge he served 20 years in prison, so that's just basic maths. If he was sentenced in 1961 and served 20 years, then he was definitely not released in the year 2000. It was scary how many blogs were quoting another blog and none of them seemed to have attempted to do any fact-checking. 
The Latin Times told one story about Trevino having an accomplice and third lover, but this was never mentioned in the court case and no one else was charged. Latin Times also talked about Guadalupe being an uncle, which wasn't true. It also then said Trevino's third lover was just a friend and was unaware he was an accomplice. In one article it said this supposed uncle called the cops, in the next it said the uncle's farmhand did it. It was basically a bad version of Chinese whispers and the whispers were being told by the same person! Trying to find one consistent account of events proved very difficult, but I think I dug enough where I was able to find some accuracy. But anything I was unsure of, I made sure to make it known. This piece of information I could not verify. Hence why I use the word supposed a lot. But the crime itself and what he did to the body seem to be the only things everyone agrees on. And that, ladies and gentlemen, and every other gender and non-gender in between, is the story behind Hannibal Lecter. I've got a head that's about to collapse. Um, like I said, never done so much research in my life. I don't even think I did this much research, even with high school projects. Um, but it was actually really fun diving that deep and, and learning so much and actually having to <laughs> hit up friends and like, hi! Anybody who speaks Spanish, please help me out. Which reminds me, um, big thank you to Jacinica. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Luckily for me, being that she is Hispanic, she's fluent in Spanish and she was able to do some translating for me, uh, which was such a relief. Other than that, I was luckily able to use Google Translate, but Google Translate is not always reliable. Um, yeah, this was actually surprisingly fun and it was interesting that in trying to learn about um, Alfredo I actually ended up learning about the Simmons case and um, yeah that was a very interesting thing I almost got distracted looking into his story and I'm like no no he's got nothing to do with this go back there um, but yeah his story was uh, also interesting and also I was going into like uh, the bowels of the internet and I was actually finding old snapshots of um, Mexican newspapers and that was pretty really interesting actually and like oh my god I feel so journalistic I'm looking at newspaper clips from the 1950s um, so it's fun depressing story but fun I I kind of like the thought that maybe he had kind of repented um, that he dedicated his life to doing good and helping people and did so free of charge. I, I really hope he didn't, you know, secretly go and do anything bad. I like to think that maybe he did change and maybe it was really just, maybe it really was a matter of it was out of anger and he just used his medical knowledge to get rid of the body. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I can't say, I can only speculate. But that is the end of today's video. I guess I now have to get working on the next one. I had so many options, which one will I choose next? But I'm actually really enjoying making this a more regular series. So that's three videos I've done now. Now to go work on the fourth. But being that I have nothing else to say and I don't feel like plugging anything today, I will just say thank you for watching please like this video if you like this video <laughs> and uh, maybe subscribe, maybe don't, entirely up to you. But I will close this out by thanking my patrons and until next time, bye!